At this time, we're going to observe and remember the Lord's death as he commanded his followers to do. We take a piece of cracker which represents his body which was nailed to the cross for our sins and we drink juice which represents his blood which was shed on the cross to redeem us from our sins and we're reminded and we're also proclaiming when we do this a price a, a very costly death which God paid to redeem people from sin in order to prepare for this observation, we're going to look at a passage of Scripture in order to help us to better appreciate what Christ did on the cross. And if you don't have a Bible, some men will make it available to you. Just raise your hand and, and they will see that you get one. And if you don't own a Bible, this is yours to keep. So please turn in your Bible to the book of Hebrews chapter 5 and we'll be reading verses 7 through 10 of this chapter. This passage describes what Jesus experienced as he became a man and in order to become our Savior and how that experience made him a perfect Savior. Follow along as I read Hebrews chapter 5 verses 7 through 10. In the days of his flesh, he offered up both prayers and supplications with loud crying and fears to the one who is able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his piety. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation, being designated by God as a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh it refers to the short time, about 33 years, that Jesus spent here on earth in a mortal body. Before this, he had only known the joy of fellowship with his Father. Now in this flesh, he offers prayers and supplications with loud crying and tears to his Father. This is an indication of suffering. What distress would cause the Son to pray like this to his Father? Well, the sinless Son, to the sinless Son, Sin was repugnant to him, to his holy nature. He's going to be identified with sin, the, the man who knew no sin, who was the eternal son of God. As he, and, and God, this, this is necessary if he's going to redeem us from sin. Our sin must have a appropriate punishment meted out in order to make us acceptable to God. God cannot just forgive and say, You're, I, I'm just going to forgive you without justice being met for our sin. So it's going to be met in his son as he bears the, the wrath and the penalty of death for our sin. And we're the ones that deserve the eternal death. But he pays it all in the time on the cross. So he's distressed at this prospect. And perhaps the worst part for him will be that his father will actually turn his face away from him as he is bearing our sin. When he was in the garden before he went to the cross, he cried out, if it po is possible, let this cup pass from me. But then in submission to his father and in keeping with the purpose for which he came into the world, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. He was crying to the one who was able to save him from death. And his cry was heard because of his piety. This word piety might be better translated because of his godly reverence. The father heard him because of his godly reverence or godly fear. And while the father did not 
keep him from dying, he did raise him from the dead after three days after his death. As a human, Jesus was learning during his earthly time. As a child, he grew in wisdom and understand and stature, just like a normal child does. And even though he was a perfect son, he learned obedience in his adult years from what he suffered. It's not that there was anything, that there, there was no disobedience in him ever, but it was that he had to learn a new thing as a man. He had to learn to suffer. And only by suffering could he become a perfect savior. Not that there was any imperfection in him, but to be a perfect savior, he must suffer for our sin. As a God-man, and that's what we will call him, a God-man, he was God in the flesh, but he was also truly man. He could bring together the infinite value of deity and marry it to mortal flesh, being a human and a sinless sacrifice for sin. As the God-man, he, he would suffer the wrath of God against our sin and die in our place, becoming the perfect Savior from sin. He became sin for us that we could become the righteousness of God in him. He became the source of eternal salvation to all those who obey him. True saving faith results in obedience. As James says, faith without works is dead. Verse 10 tells us that God designated Jesus as a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was the king of Salem and the priest of God who blessed Abraham when he came back from defeating the kings that had captured his, his nephew Lot. In, in chapter 7 of Hebrews, he, uh, God, or the, the writer of Hebrews describes in more detail what it means to be a priest in the order of Melchizedek. For one thing, there's no record of the birth or death of Melchizedek. It's like as though he lives on. And this is true of Jesus Christ. He has no beginning, no end. For that reason, he doesn't die. He did die once for our sins. But now as a high priest in the presence of God, he does not die again like the priest in the Old Testament did and had to be replaced by another priest. He lives on forever so that he is able to save forever those who come to God through him. And then Melchizedek's name means uh, King of Salem is King of Peace, and his name translated is actually King of Righteousness. And we, Jesus Christ brings both peace and righteousness to us. We who were enemies because of our sin are given peace with God through faith in him. We who are wicked and sinful and unworthy are made righteous in him through faith. Another significance of the connection is that there's, or let's see, I've already said that we're not going to repeat, he, that he lives on forever. And that's, that's very important for our eternal salvation. It's as though um, he always lives to make intercession for us. Now, the, uh, at this time, we're going to remember because we have this eternal salvation. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are invited to partake of this. And just remember that this man that we have just been talking about is our Savior. That's who we're remembering as we partake and as we look at ourselves, con uh, confess sin, forsake it, because he died for that. To redeem. He actually died to re save us from our sin, not in our sin. If, you, you're, if you're here this morning and you have not come to trust Christ as your Savior, we ask that you refrain from partaking because this is actually for followers of Jesus Christ. Just pass the elements on. But we'd ask that you would seriously consider that what we've been talking about is your only hope 
of salvation. So, men, you uh, may come now at this time, and when your heart is prepared, you might may partake of this. Mm-hmm.